So I built this, an outdoor enclosure for some rare New Zealand geckos. Watch how I did it. Finally, it's been months, but we're here. You see, these geckos needed a new home. They needed a permanent home. So why now, and why this? Well, now look at me trying to do DIY. It's like a monkey discovering tools for the first time. I had to wait for the warm weather to come back, and it took months, and then... The warm weather finally came back, and that was Godzilla. He's a sucker for honey. I was on a mission to build an outdoor aluminium enclosure for these geckos. But why? Unlike exotic reptiles, New Zealand geckos need the natural sun. So I turned this into this, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So why do these geckos need to be outside, specifically these? Well firstly they love the fresh air, they thrive in these elements, and they're tough. They live in these harsh climates in New Zealand, so it's natural for them. It's a lot more exciting than staring at them through glass as well. Now I keep them in both environments and I have found personally outdoor is best. So I needed a few things. I needed the planter box, I needed cast wheels, I needed screws, I needed hinges, I needed aluminium steel for the framing, and I needed aluminium mesh. Oh, and I almost forgot, of course, I needed power tools. So why aluminium? Well, firstly, aluminium is lightweight, it's sturdy, and it doesn't rust, meaning that this potentially will last forever. And if I'm gonna keep them outside, that's exactly what I want. Look what happens to timber enclosures. Now don't get me wrong, it looks nice, but it warps, it bends, and it peels, which is no good. Now, sourcing all the materials was not cheap, but it was worth it. All up, it was about 500 New Zealand dollars for everything I needed. All right, enough jibber jabber, let's get into it. We're gonna build the frame, and this was the easy part. I cut everything to size and had these plastic connectors to put the actual frame together. I needed everything to be the right size. So I went to an aluminium place and I actually got everything cut to size because I didn't have the tools and didn't trust myself, obviously, to do it myself. Now I was really chuffed with myself that I could do the easiest part of the whole enclosure but I'll tell you what, once you build the frame you really start to see it come together and it was, I'm not gonna lie, looking pretty dope. The foundation is one of the most important parts. You want a nice level area because no one, gecko or human, wants to live on a slope. Unless you're a mountain goat, which last I checked, none of my geckos are, or neither am I. A garden planter is perfect as a base. All you need to do is add some caster wheels so it can move around, keeps it off the ground and will be used for everything I end up planting in it. Next up, the mesh. The mesh was an absolute to deal with, but it's very, very important. It's to keep out the predators and keep in our precious geckos. This mesh is approved by local governing bodies around the country and it's also used as predator-free fencing, zoo spec enclosures, so we're talking about a fortress here. Think of it as Alcatraz, but with less criminal history and just a little more freedom. This mesh also low-key lets in small insects, it's perfect for UVB exposure and the geckos can munch on any insects they get in and they get all the direct sunlight that they need. All right, my first rookie mistake. I tried to use scissors to cut the mesh. This worked for maybe one bit of steel, but there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. So get some good tin snips, that's all I'm saying. The second mistake was pretty rookie and embarrassing and shows you how non-DIY I truly am and that is learn how to use a rivet gun. Now, after talking to experts, screws were not recommended and the use of rivets makes the enclosure a lot stronger, so here I am. So rivets every 10 centimeters or 100 mils or 3.93 inches, my North American friends. Otherwise, this is me using my new tin snips and by golly, life was easy after that. Alright guys, third rookie mistake, get yourself some good gloves if you're dealing with mesh. Some thick gloves, I don't know how many times I cut myself but my hands were looking like Freddy Krueger's at the end of it all. The tin snips, the gloves, four purpose footwear, those are the three key things you need to get this done as well as, of course, all the equipment. Now I also needed perspex, but for a particular reason. I wanted to make a perspex front door because all the other right sides are mesh and you can't really see too well through the mesh, but I needed a good viewing platform so I could observe the geckos on a day to day if I had to. <laughs> all 
All right, so the fourth mistake, it's like I can't do anything right, just kidding. But the fourth rookie mistake was definitely not having clamps. And I didn't even go and get clamps. I just battled through it. I struggled, I stressed, but I got there in the end. Clamps are crucial to keep the mesh nice and tight, especially when you're putting the brackets on and trying to put it all together. <music> Piece by piece, side by side, mesh by mesh. As the project went on, I was becoming a lot more comfortable with putting it together, getting faster, and the project was really starting to come together. All right, another one. Fifth rookie mistake, let's hear it. Get a motor box. Get a motor box so you can cut things straight. As you can see, I was hot and bothered. I had to get the rig out. I was working hard. The biceps were working. You need a motor box. So I needed four hinges for the door because the Perspex front door was quite heavy. So two wasn't going to cut it. Three was, uh, four was perfect. All right, I got that sucker up and I tested the door. And you know what? It was perfect. So I got the snips out again and I just tidied up all the edges to make sure no wire was coming through. It was all sealed off and it was looking good. Now the latches for the door. So one at the top, one at the bottom, and it just keeps the door secure and in place. Then it was time to move the enclosure to one of the planter boxes that I had already to go, measured up. I couldn't remember which one it was exactly, but we got there in the end eventually. <laughs> So I'm not lying, I was proud of myself. I put this all together by myself. The mesh was definitely the hardest part. Like for 100%, I would have loved to have someone else have done it, but I'm glad I did it. All right, now really critical to the whole process, I needed a beer. Now the next step was to secure the enclosure to the planter box, and this was done by screws. So screws to go through the base of the enclosure straight into the planter box itself. And the last piece of the puzzle was outdoor clear silicon to go around the edges, make sure that there's no gaps and it's all secured. Now for the fun part, the interior design. We're adding some natural elements here. I've got the soil, I've got the logs, I've got the branches and some native New Zealand plants for that real homey feel. So I love inspiration when I'm doing these things. So I'll go outside, I'll go for a native walk, or I'll go to a native plant nursery, and I'll get all the inspiration I need with regards to what plants I need for this enclosure. Now I'm making a New Zealand outdoor gecko enclosure, so it needs to be credible, it needs to be authentic. So I need New Zealand flora, and I need to replicate their wild environment as much as I can. So what did I end up getting? I got a Kofi, I got a Karakia, and I got a Pittsburgh. These are three native plants that grow in New Zealand, they're endemic, and also geckos have been found on these plants in the wild so this is why i selected them now you might be thinking he's being awfully aggressive ramming all of that in well the thing is with new zealand geckos is they need dense foliage because they like to escape they hide in the dense foliage it also protects them from the weather elements so lots and lots of dense shrub because that's what they like they feel secure and they're more likely to venture out and explore their environment <music> Then I added the branches. The branches are key. This is what the geckos are going to climb on. They're going to bask on these. Now let's say I was going to add three geckos. I don't know if I am, you'll find out. But let's say if it is three, then I'm going to need at least four to five branches so they don't have to uh, basically fight for basking or prime basking spots. We're not done yet. Oh no, we're not done yet isopods cleanup crew beetles and isopods because this is outside there's soil and there's vegetation i want that soil to be healthy so of course i'm going to add the best cleanup crew i can get my hands on for free in new zealand well there you have it this enclosure has everything a gecko would want in its life Arboreal elements, lots of places to hide, lots of places to climb. I think it's epic. 
And I think this enclosure is quite universal. It's made out of aluminium, which means it's going to last for a long time. Uh, there's also species around the world that you can keep outside. Um, New Caledonian species in North America. I know in some parts they can probably keep them outside, especially in you know spring and summer, and maybe bring them inside in the winter. I don't know. But it's secure. It's safe. It's uh, predator-free. It's strong. And if you add all the elements, you can make a pretty epic environment. All right. I had to add more, obviously. I'm not quite done. I need to add the hides. Now, this is pipe. Now you can use bamboo hides or you can use this like downpipe material. What it does is it gives them somewhere to hide, it keeps them warm and it keeps them cool at the same time. So I just use cable ties to secure them in location so they're nice and secure. Geckos can get away from the weather, the temperature, whatever it may be to make them feel secure. Now I wasn't kidding when I said this took months. You see, I built this at the beginning of winter and now we're almost in spring and things were growing but nothing grows that quickly. So what I did was I got some native cutoffs and I put them at the very top parts of the enclosure so they can get up to the higher parts and get ultimate sun basking opportunities. So what am I doing here? I'm adding honey to the enclosure. You see New Zealand geckos love nectar in the wild, so I'm adding some enrichment to the enclosure. As you can see, I'm kind of looking around to where the most sun is gonna be, so I need to move the enclosure eventually. I'm gonna mist it and I'm gonna prepare it for the most exciting part of the video, getting those little suckers in there. These three gorgeous animals is the New Zealand forest gecko. Now, firstly, look at that camouflage. Sign them up for the military today. These guys were going from an indoor enclosure to this. It was like extreme makeover, house edition, gecko edition. So I got all three in and they started exploring. I'm sure they were loving every second of it. Frost geckos are naturally nocturnal, meaning that they come out at night and they hide during the day. They will come out during the day to cryptically bask. So if it's a super hot day or there's sun, they will come out, get a bit of sun, and then they might hide away again and then come out at night, which is where they do their hunting. As the sun sets, all the cool wildlife comes out. So, the geckos are in, and I hope they like it. I hope you found this useful. I hope you enjoyed it. I want to leave you with one thought. If I can build this, so can you. Stay tuned for the next one.